Hello, everybody. Welcome to our first um, Header Ecosystem Spotlight, episode one. Um, we'll be talking today about NFTs and their utility in the ecosystem. We have some uh, great uh, projects coming up on the panel today, and we're just going to wait a couple of minutes to have everybody on board, and um, we'll get it going. Thank you guys for joining us. I think uh, so. Hangry Barboons and Creamies are up on deck. We got that Pixels as well. If there's anybody else who uh, wants to join in on the discussion, um, tell us uh, a bit more about uh, what they might be doing, the way that they're perceiving things. Um, happy to have them on board. And uh, Yes, so uh, we have a great panel of invitees uh, today, and I'm excited to catch up with, with uh, you guys and the ecosystem. As I mentioned, it's the first time we have this uh, ecosystem spotlight event that will be a recurrent event. And uh, we're very honored to have some of the blue chip NFT projects on Hedera uh, up with us today. Uh, Master Ogwe is, uh, as you might know, our community lead and um, also uh, the one who organized this event. Hey, Master, how's it going? Hey, Tudor, thank you for the introduction. I'm good, thank you. Great to see everybody, and thank you to Angry Barboons, Dead Pixels, and Creamies for joining us today in our first edition of the Hedera Ecosystem Spotlight. It's great to have you here. Thank you guys for joining. Um, just as uh, uh, people roll up um, to, to the spaces, uh, would you guys want to uh, to tell us a bit about uh, yourselves, who we're speaking to, and uh, uh, yeah, just uh, um, who's who's behind uh, the project and the uh, PFP? If you want to start in uh, alphabetical order, I think uh, uh, Monkey, I think you'd be uh, you'd be first. But I guess uh, you like to be referred to as Master of the Cream, so I've heard. <laughs> um, all right, I'll go first. So uh, it's Monkey. Um, I'm the creator of Creamies. Um, what, what, do you want a brief introduction of our project? or If you can tell us just a bit about yourself, just so we know the person behind uh, the PFP. Uh, okay, so I, I <laughs> if you look at my personal profile, I guess I, I'm known to be a master paper hand. Um, I just like buying and selling stuff, whether it's NFTs or fungible tokens. Um, and and I, I ape into projects that I like. And so it kind of made sense for me to start my own project and try to gamify it, right? And it it brings a fun aspect when you are kind of conflicted with buying or holding or selling or, you know. So I... I enjoy the space. I genuinely enjoy the space. So I guess that's me uh, in a nutshell. Yeah, that's it. Thanks a lot for, for the intro, Monkey. Um, also, I think from Dead Pixels, we have uh, Ray with us. Uh, unfortunately, you don't get Ray tonight. This is Will uh, behind the PFP tonight. Um, but thanks, thanks so much for, for having me. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, so my name is Will. I'm, I'm one of uh, three members on the team. There's myself and then Ray and Raf. Um, and the three of us have been working together for about 15 years now. We've been friends for quite some time. And um, yeah, so we, we got into um, Hedera and um, most recently, of course, NFTs. But, but we started kind of investigating and, and starting to invest in Hedera and HBAR about a year and a half ago now. Um, so yeah, that's us. Um, we, we've we worked on creative projects before. Um, our, our kind of experience has been around art, branding, and marketing. Um, and we felt like those things kind of played well towards building a, an NFT project and community. And so we were pretty excited to, to jump into this ecosystem and, and try our hand at it. And um, yeah, it's been tons of fun so far and 
we're, we're really excited about what's to come. So, yeah, thanks again for having us on. As we are as well. Um, uh, I think uh, it, it's, it's, it's been a very exciting space in Hedera since NFTs really picked up and uh, it really serves as a, as a cornerstone to the growth we're seeing today with uh, new exciting announcements uh, every, every other day seemingly. So, uh, Definitely. Uh, thank you so much. Last but not least, um, uh, Hangry Barboons, um, would you like to, to uh, uh, give a short intro about yourself? Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, so I go by Hangry online. Um, I This is sort of a, I guess you could say a solo project, Hangry Barboons. Um, I have a great uh, community mod team in the Discord, but the creative and, uh, you know, building of the project is is basically me um in in real life i guess i i'm a healthcare provider i'm a pa um and a digital illustrator so when when i was in in pa school studying medicine um i kind of combined my digital art skills and in 2015 i did a kickstarter if you're familiar with kickstarter of raising money for a project so i i did a successful kickstarter and kind of launched a publishing company actually and I have a few books of like educational medical illustrations um, to teach medicine and they're used in schools and stuff Um, in my medical career I've worked in cardiology and I wrote an entire textbook on uh, EKG interpretation so that's like when you put electrodes on your chest and try to interpret the graph to to figure out the rhythm of the heart and so I, I've had a lot of experiences in publishing and illustration, and I, I, I was inspired by like web comics like Penny Arcade and medical and, and cartoons like Ren and Stimpy. So I, I've kind of like combined all those things and sort of inspired my artwork. And it was last year when I like found out about crypto and and uh, NFTs and stuff. And obviously, I was like, wow, what a what an opportunity to kind of put all the skills I've learned over the years into um, a new ecosystem, uh, like like an emerging technology. So that really excited me. And a uh, long story short, I thought Hedera was the best place to put my skills into use. And I fell in love with the community. And so um, here we are. That's very impressive. And I'm honestly fascinated by your background. It's uh, <laughs> very interesting the way we kind of like have people from all over the spectrum of uh, Web2 experiences contributing and bringing value to Web3. And uh, I think it's a bit of a paradigm shift when it comes to the more, let's say, standard way that people would be progressing in their careers in the Web2 space, where you're kind of like labeled or restricted to a certain path. So uh, fascinated to learn about your background, Henry. Very, very impressive indeed. And uh, did I also see that you're running for president? Oh yes, yeah. That's that's a huge component of my campaign, of uh, of my project. I mean, so the the whole project uh, takes place in the United Hashgraph of Planet Earth. That's the government that I'm building and the, I'm running for presidency. Um, I'm feeling pretty good about it because uh, in my Discord channel, there's uh, a place where you can vote for president, and I'm running against Vitalik Buterin and Do Kwan. And they're really struggling right now. Um, I, I just, it's pretty much a landslide. So I'm still oh waiting for all the votes to come in. I'm not <laughs> totally sure what's going to happen, but that, that an announcement should be made soon about that. And then hopefully I can officially be president. Well, it sounds like a pretty fair um, running. And how, how much longer do we have to cast our votes? Well, the, the votes... The official voting has kind of ended because I was using it as a method to, to keep track of who I was delivering golden banana coins to. And I'm, I'm pretty much out of them. I have a few left for giveaways or, or like uh, also for Lehman, one for Lehman. So okay. I'm just waiting to, to give them out. And so, the, so that kind of has ended. Um, people who have bought coins on secondary don't have a voter role so if if they buy a coin on secondary i'm sort of manually assigning it to them and they can vote so if if you've bought a coin and don't have a voter role you can reach out to me on discord and be a part of history 
Um, I, 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 I'm pretty sure Monkey voted against me <laughs> on the poll, <laughs> <laughs> but but that's okay. It's all it's all good. We're we're all family here. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Hungry. That's so cool. So uh, just for people who joined uh, late, um, this is the first uh, in our Hedera Ecosystem Spotlight series uh, where we'll be chatting with some of the most disruptive Hedera projects and gain insight on uh, industry stand, uh, trends, their strategy, roadmaps. Um, so it, it should be a very uh, educationally uh, themed series with a lot of alpha, uh, as, uh, as uh, Henry uh, alluded to. Um, I do appreciate everybody tuning in from all over the world. We try to have a um, time that's uh, somewhere in between that works for everybody across all coasts from Australia to, to the US. So we appreciate everybody who's jumping in in their early mornings or late evenings. Um, we're, we're, today, we're uh, specifically looking into uh, discussing NFTs, their utility in each project, and um, the general gamification of, of uh, the project overall, how they're building the ecosystem. Um, so some of the best blue chip Hedera projects are here with us today. And um, we will be learning a lot more of how they're uh, interacting with, with uh, Hedera itself. Uh, we have a few uh, questions lined up for each project as we go along. And uh, me and uh, Master will be moderating the discussion uh, with, with the panelists. Um, uh, so uh, without further ado, um, Master, do you want to uh, uh, lead the way? Of course. Thank you, Tudor. Uh, now that uh, we have more people here, we've heard a bit of an intro of everyone behind the, behind the projects. I would love to hear a um, brief introdu introduction of each of the projects we have here today uh, and starting again in alphabetical order with Creamies. So I, I want to, yes, master of cream <laughs> monkey. Um, I want to say, I don't like going first because I feel like my last answer was, was way worse than those guys. But um, yeah, a brief, uh, <laughs> a brief, a brief introduction to our project. So Creamies is a collection of 1,111 NFTs. Um, and the way we kind of have utility and gamification for our project is per NFT, you get a fungible token allocation. So it's a daily drip. So you get 100 cream per day from our cream uh, faucet on our website. But you could also turn in five regular creamies for an upgraded master creamer, which is just the next tier. And what that does is it's a one of one. It's a, it's a different looking creamy or master creamer in this case. And it, it gives you a multiplier on your allocation of cream. So it gives you a 1.5 multiplier and it has a base value of 600 cream per day. So that's 900 cream per day if you have one master creamer. But if you have other creamies or other master creamers, you get that bonus as well. So our cream tokens is kind of the main utility, I would say, and it's what runs our ecosystem. And we have dApps and games, and we're building more constantly on top of it. And our cream token is currently on Saucer Swap with an incentivized pool, so people could also farm and yield. Um, for, sorry, yield farm their tokens on Saucer Swap as well. Very yeah. Cool. And I and I did notice that uh, the AP, APR on uh, that particular pool has been one of the most generous ones uh, for the past uh, couple of months. So uh, uh, exciting for sure. Uh, it's uh, very great to hear. Thank you, Monkey. Uh, I have to ask, um, <laughs> I see you like to stick to the theme of um, Kareemis being a scam or a rug. Could you explain a bit the ideology behind that? The ideology behind us like fudding our own bags um, at the surface level, it's for fun, right? We like to kind of fud our own bags and, you know, it's just, it's a bunch of DJs playing in this space, right? Most of the NFT people, and it's it's a different crowd, mainly from the DeFi people. And I'm, I have a DeFi background. So when I first came in, I was very skeptical of NFTs as well. Um, and I guess another thing that happens is when people FUD your project and they 
you know, are critical of your project, which I am. I'm I'm very critical and I'm pretty vocal, less more now, less vocal now that I'm a creator. Um, but I'm very vocal when it comes to these things. So I like, I enjoy people being critical about my project and what we're doing. And if I do something wrong, that way, I guess we could see the flaws because, because, you know, you might be doing something you think is good, is great, but you get feedback from, from your community, from people that aren't even in your community. And, you know, it's always good to reflect on that stuff. And, and it's fun, right? We say we're going to rug in Q4. So that's your alpha. <laughs> No, that's awesome. That's uh, a much deeper and uh, thoughtful answer than I had expected. No, it's great to hear you're that critical, even of your own work. That's what we want to see. Um, well, great. If if uh, that's all for the creamies, we can move on to Dead Pixel, an introduction into the project. Sure. Um now, now I'm wishing that Monkey hadn't gone first because we're going to go from the project with the most utility to the project with the use, least utility. Um, <laughs> no, so um, our project is uh, it's a collection of 10,000 ghosts. Um, we, we actually started working on this back in October. Um, we started working on the project and we released our first drop in April. Um, of this year and and so uh, because we started on a, a 10k project um, we decided to go the route of releasing it in staggered drops instead of all at the same time um, we, we kind of took um, a page out of the playbook from hcraft punks we learned a lot from the way that they were rolling out things and running their project and we, and we liked a lot of those aspects um, and so we decided to go that route um, and to, to kind of give context to those decisions, you know, when we when we were first were exploring building a project uh, on Hedera, the, uh, you know, a, a 10K project was definitely something that would have been too large to release to the size of the community at that time. Um, I believe something like, I remember, I think it was in October or November of last year, someone had kind of run some statistics and, and said, I, you know, I think they came to the conclusion that at that time there was only about 2,000, I, I believe, someone correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe it was 2,000 wallets that they found that basically had linked with an NFT of some sort. Um, so the conclusion I think that they came to was there was about 2,000 people in the NFT ecosystem at that time. Um, I could be giving wildly inaccurate information, but this is what I'm kind of remembering um, off the top of my head. But anyway, to, to get to the point of, of how we came to like our, our process, you know, we, we knew, okay, 10,000 is way too much to release on a community that isn't, isn't ready for it yet. But we wanted to build a project that had a large supply because we wanted to build a project around a large community because of some of the vision that we had for what we wanted to to create um, within the project. And, and some of those ideas required a large community. Um, so that's just to, to kind of give background on why we decided to go with a larger project, but release it in staggered drops. Um, one one thing I guess the, to kind of describe the ethos of our project and, and you know a lot of the questions are going to be around utility um, but we we decided early on that our main focus really was going to be building an art collectible and and really view and design the project as such um, so one of the things we actually really found that we fell in love with uh, in terms of doing a project in staggered drops is it allowed us to view the collection that we're building as a living art project um, rather than one that we're going to create the layers for generate the ghosts and then finalize the entire collection and release it. Um, now it's you know one where we're going to continually explore new new traits that we can add to the ghosts and um, yeah new new variants that. Uh, we'll continually explore as the project goes on. So that's been a really fun aspect of it. Um, but yeah, I, I think that going back to what I mentioned just a moment ago, 
you know, seeing our project as an art collectible and a brand that we're building and growing a community around. Um, we, we really wanted that to be at the heart of how we started the project. Um, and then we felt when it comes to things like utilities and benefits, we wanted that to be something organic that, that came about from a strong community. Um, so we, we kind of wanted to do uh, u- utility as something that we programmed at the back end rather than the front end. Um, so hopefully that gives a, a little bit of an overview in terms of uh, what the project is and, and kind of the ethos around you know, how we're building it and, and how we view utility. That's very insightful stuff. And uh, I think that one of the interesting things, obviously, I mean, NFT projects are deeply rooted in community and uh, probably they have the biggest, uh, they, they generate the biggest sense of community from all crypto projects up to, up to this uh, paradigm shift that we had in 2011 with NFTs. Um, so, uh, and, and there is interesting other, let's say, uh, precedents and uh, loot, if uh, people are familiar with it, comes to mind where they generated these NFTs that had particular traits. And then there's the community that built uh, mm. RPGs around it and uh, the, the value lay, lies in the community nonetheless. Yeah, no, I mean, you're, you're spot on with the community and we've been, it's been really interesting for us to kind of, you know, go through this experience and, you know, we, we, we weren't necessarily when we got into this uh, veterans of the NFT space. And I, that's kind of a funny thing to say, because, you know, even going back to October of last year, and it's hard to call anyone a veteran of, of such a young space, but um, we, we found ourselves pretty new. So we were trying to learn as much as possible. And one recurring theme that we always heard was, you know, community is at the center of NFT projects. And and we didn't really know what that meant until we actually launched the project. Um, and once we launched the project and we, we, we gained those, the, that first group of holders, it was really incredible to see how much that community really drove what the project became. I, we, we felt incredibly lucky that the that first group that kind of formed the community was just such a fun talented group like you know they they were constantly doing fun things with the ghosts being creative creating gifts monkey always jokes that uh the the only reason that the the price of ghosts rise on the open market is uh is when people create gifts or or make memes of the ghosts and I don't think he's far off. Um, it, it really is. Uh, it really is. It's it's a fun thing to watch when when the community kind of makes your project their own, and and uh, it's definitely been something we've loved a lot about doing this. Oh, I think it's amazing, and hearing your description of the space just a year ago, it's uh, crazy to see how far it's come. And you guys as well are only been around for a year. You're doing amazing, and I got to say. Um, you focusing on the artwork, well, you can tell it's brilliant. I love it. Uh, so, yeah, it's really nice to hear. Appreciate that. Thank you for saying that. And uh, also, I know you mentioned at the moment you don't have any front-end utility built into the NFTs, um, but I think I saw uh, something about these NFTs being used for Lehman Swap. Yeah, so... Um... <laughs> Yeah, so so this was this was a funny thing that we were on a spaces and um, uh, someone who's an advisor to Lehman Swap um, kind of dropped a, a bit of a bombshell that we we weren't even aware of at the time. But yeah, it looks like um, Lehman Swap. Uh, they they mentioned on a space that we were on with them. You know, they really see themselves coming into an ecosystem. They see value in involving nft projects in DeFi, um and they they see kind of a um you know a collective benefit that both sides would have if if there's more involvement in the edit from the nft ecosystem with the DeFi ecosystem and so they mentioned they're going to provide um certain benefits to some nft projects in airdropping um, some of their tokens to holders of various NFT projects. Um, and, and we've been lucky enough to be named as one. And 
I believe they named Creamies as another, and I, I, I'm I, I'm pretty sure that they have some others in mind. I don't know if it uh, if it's been announced yet, so I don't want to to mention anything until it is. Um, feel free to jump in, anyone, if if there is more information that's been shared. Um, but I think they also mentioned the idea of then those those NFTs acting as a multiplier for the benefits when when people are staking and things like that. Um, and so that's actually, you, you know, you, you mentioned that it's a really good um, example of something that, you know, we, another way that we view utility um, and something that we were excited about and, and it's kind of cool because it's, it's come sooner than we expected was, you know, we, we sat down to think about our project and what we could do and, and the cool stuff that we could build. And when we thought about it, we, we thought about what are our strengths? What are we good at? And, and we said, okay, well, we're good at making, you know, creative projects, art and branding. Like that's what we've done in the past. That's what we feel like we're good at. Um, so we, we thought, you know, if we really focus on that and if we're fortunate, fortunate enough and lucky enough that we are able to create a strong brand, you know, then you have the opportunity to partner with people that are building really cool things and really good at what they do. So for example, you know, if, if we tried to go and create a video game around the ghosts, um, you know, we're not video game creators. So what, whatever we could create wouldn't necessarily be um, <laughs> too flattering, I, I guess I would say for our project and, and representative of, of what we'd like to make. Whereas, you know, if, if we get to the point where we're able to partner with people who are making really cool games um, or even, you know, be able to, you know, get people to build games for us down the road, we, we feel like that's kind of um, the best option for us. And so, you know, this is kind of one example of, you know, you, you start you start doing what you're good at and building something and then sometimes the utilities find you. Um, and so it's been kind of cool to see that develop sooner than we expected. And that's uh, that's something that uh, over at Headstarter we also have been trying to do in our earlier months, especially at the beginning of the year. Um, we did have some collaborative um, uh, NFT initiatives with um, Lazy Superheroes, with uh, Koala, and with yeah. H2T. Um, and we wanted initially to to have drops with uh, every NFT project. Uh, it requested it required a lot of legwork, and uh, ultimately the the, the technical in, uh, implications are pretty complex. So um, go go and going back to to your point about earlier days in the Hedera NFT uh, space, maybe uh, only two thousand wallets uh, were linked to. Uh, uh, any type of NFT because maybe a lot, uh, a lot of them that thought they were owning an NFT were actually holding an FT. Uh, but um, uh, yeah, that, that yeah. was a funny finding. Uh, <laughs> I, I really, I really hope that that this whole two thousand wallet thing. I'm not giving like really terrible information. <laughs> this is just what I'm recalling. It's gonna, be, it's gonna come call. this like misinformation that spreads around. <laughs> Will said there was only 2,000 <laughs> NFT holders in October of 2021. Um, I'm sure I'm wrong, but um, it, it, it was it was basically just to highlight it was a much smaller community back then, and um, it's been amazing to see how much it's grown. Well, we got uh, Master of Cream here, so it's only natural we create some FUD. And <laughs> that's, that's right. <laughs> so FUD and, FUD and disinformation. We got to do that. <laughs> But the space has grown a lot. We see uh, tens of thousands of active wallets today, and uh, we have, I think, a uh, ballpark of uh, $70 million um, dollars currently uh, locked in uh, between uh, Stater and uh, Saucer, and uh, we expect that number to, to go up significantly as more use cases roll out in the, in the network. Um, uh, Hangry Barboons, sorry to have kept you waiting. Uh, would you like to give us uh, an intro about uh, where 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 the, your project is uh, sitting so far? Yeah, sure. Um, so we're talking about like a, an overview of the project in general. Yeah, that'd yeah. be great. Yeah. yeah. Um, so the I, I I relate a lot to Dead Pixels um, because when when I first started all this my my main thing was i want to create the best art i can it's art that will attract attention to the ecosystem and that like people are proud to own and things like that 
Um, I, I have developed a sense of like when you look at a PFP or or art from other chains, what is it? There's like an it factor sort of like that makes you want to own that 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 artwork. Um, so so the quality of the artwork is really important to me, and and in general, the plan for this is is four thousand four hundred forty four. Um, unique barboons uh, in the collection. When when I first joined Hedera, I I had intended this to be a 10k collection just because of how common that is in ETH and Solana and stuff like that. But but like Will said, there's only 2,000 wallets, so I had to tone it down, <laughs> and uh, I decided to uh, bring it down to 4,444. The the number four has a lot of significance in my project. It's it's sort of just spiraled into this meme. Um, and the reason I, I use that number is because when I was a kid, I, I used that number in sports like baseball and basketball in my jersey. And and then um, actually Binks from Pixel Land, she, she posted on Twitter one day, uh, hangry for president. And that's where that came from. She kind of posted that in the comments of a random tweet. And she tagged me and I was like, you know what? That is true. I should be president. And I ran with it. And, and like the whole project, like just took a pivot towards me becoming president. So, so thanks to Binks. Shout out to Binks. <laughs> and um, yeah, so, so the goal is really to create this really kind of what I, what I wanted an, an epic art collection, like just kind of going full blast on, on my skills as an artist Um and and then and and creating a brand like like similar to dead pixels i want to create so, like a brand that um that makes you feel a certain way you know cool and funny and um and 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 just kind of exudes quality um so so as far as like utility and things with the project i similar you know i i i'm trying to establish myself and then as as people, as the project gains attention, you know, organically you attract talent, you know? So um, one, one, one person I want to give a shout out to is Emrak from HBAR space. He, he, his, his team has developed token gating for, for uh, my project and for, for many others, but that was something I was looking for, for, you know, especially with my golden banana coin. So that has allowed me to open a private discord channel and put alpha in there. And, and I, I, and I plan to leverage H bar space a lot in the future. Um, they're putting out a lot of cool tools, not to mention obviously turtle moon, uh, the launch pad I'm using and, you know, patches is super talented and creating a lot of cool things. So as, as the project grows, I'm going to look around myself and surround myself with really talented, cool people. And that will, allow the the brand and the project to grow and and, the, and it even means partnerships with with other artists maybe and things like that so there's a lot to look forward to i'm i'm just one person so i have to really just know what i'm good at and then like will said if if opportunities arise to and i'm sure they will um you, you kind of take advantage of that I'm I'm not convinced that you're just one person by the way <laughs> yeah i am <laughs> you're a machine <laughs> He's got his presidential board, and <laughs> I'm actually I'm actually his liaison officer for North Korea, so that's why I voted for Do Kwan. <laughs> yeah, we got uh, that is a that is amazing, Hungry. Um, Obes uh, by yourself, that's crazy, and I think you hit the nail on the head with uh, the way you describe your artwork because every time I look at that profile picture, I laugh. Like it was just so funny, the <laughs> the whole thing. And actually, I was curious how you came up with hangry baboons. Oh, that's it's a good just question. Random. Um, the the reason is really Hedera and H bar because when I was brainstorming names, um, I w there was this trend of like sort of incorporating um, H bar into the name sometimes, or sometimes people put hash in front of the name, you know. So yeah. I hit it in the name. So when you say hangry, the first letter is H and barboons, the, there's bar. So if, if there's H bar in the oh, name. Oh, that's and, brilliant. <laughs> um, uh, you know, I, I, I looked around and there weren't really many uh, baboons as a, 
as a creature that had been uh, PFP to, to my knowledge, you know, that you have the gorillas yeah. and, and monkeys and apes and things, but I thought, oh, you know, baboons is, is unique enough where I can create a unique design without making it look like uh, too many other ape projects and yet still capture that, uh, that feeling of like, oh, you know, the, it, it's, it's still uh, in that <laughs> theme of apes in a sense. So yeah. so I'm trying to capture basically NFT culture in this project. I'm I'm definitely inspired by many many projects that came before me, but I'm putting my own twist on it. Yeah, well I think it's brilliant. Um <laughs> you really uh, picked a great name there. That is fascinating cuz before the before the event yesterday I was speaking to uh, uh, Master Ogwe here and I uh, was asking him if he knew what Hangry Barboons uh, stands for because I mean I, I see the I see the way uh, your PFP looks he looks angry but couldn't tell if he was also hungry or something so uh, he is he is he's very hungry <laughs> and angry and uh, and then when I first joined the the ecosystem I went by Medcomic that was my my username, and I, I had that for a little while. That's the name of my medical illustration, you know, project and company. And and then after a while, since I was using this account, people would just be like, "Hey, hangry, you know, you're up to speak." Because I would I would grind on Twitter Spaces for like the first six months of when I joined. I was on Twitter Spaces all day, uh, in between work and at lunch. I would just be jumping across different spaces, whether it's Hedera or not. I was just like talking to people and learning, and people would just call me Hangry. So then I decided, you know what, that's going to be my artist name on for for NFTs and you know, <laughs> like Madonna. <laughs> yeah, I love your backstories, man. There's a there's a story for everything. Yeah. Um, and you know, I feel you guys are very humble. You say that uh, you don't have any uh, planned, at least, utility for the NFTs. Um, but you know, what I've seen here is you have a mint coming up on the 15th of October, and it's for the golden banana coin holders. Correct. Yeah. So, so that alone. <clears throat> Yeah, if you wanted to tell us a bit more about that. Yeah, I guess I I, I didn't mention that um, I've already put out NFTs. So earlier in the year, I created 14 NFTs that are one of ones that are called Hangry Heads. And that was my first minted artwork. So they, they hold special value to me just because of that fact and historically speaking. And so and, and the low supply of them. So they were a gift that I gave for free to the first 14 people that joined my Discord server. Uh, Vicente, I think, suggested the idea, if I'm not mistaken. He's like, hey, why don't you just, you know, drop us some NFTs now or something? And I'm like, okay, I'll do it. And so I, I took a couple months and thought about it, and then I designed them and, and airdropped them. And the the those will have special utility uh, compared to the golden banana coins and the boons because there's I've created this sort of hierarchy where you have like this very exclusive collection the 14 then you have 444 coins and then you're gonna have 4444 boons so obviously um, with a lesser supply you should um, sort of reward <laughs> that collection a little more and um, the utility I've given to the coins is that you can mint four hangry barboons per coin you hold. So it, it's it's a whitelist pass, but also like I envision it to be a special, you can say special like pass or utility token in the future um, because of the small size. And I feel like the, the people who are holding them are kind of like the, the hardcore fans and stuff like that. There's even people stacking them. So if, if you hold, you know, two or three, that would be, uh, eight or 12 potentially um, booms that you could mint on, on that uh, on the 15th of October. So I, I like the idea of stacking. I like the idea of whitelist because we've seen how some mints have problems because of the traffic or bots. And, and we see in the community people getting angry because they couldn't get one and they've been here forever. I didn't get one. So blah, blah, blah. So you know what, if, if, if you're whitelisted mint in peace and then, the public can go at it uh, and good luck to you, you know? So 
I, uh, the part of part of the the fun to me of minting is not knowing what you're going to get. But I, I'm not such so much of a fan of like rushing and trying to beat others to mint. Uh, but I, I do like like the sort of surprise aspect of oh, I wonder what what art I'm going to get, you know. And there's there's obviously rarities involved, and people want to go after the more rare ones. So I'll, I'll incorporate that into my project too. And it's yeah, uh, it's great to hear also that uh, that you keep uh, especially your loyal community members incentivized, especially when you also are collecting votes for president. Uh, so true, uh, true. That's the kind of president you want. <laughs> I'm a president that wants to keep you know the citizens happy. So that's that's something that I'm very very much aware of. And we've come a long way now with mints, with whitelists, and I guess it's uh, an understatement of the progress that uh, uh, overall the uh, tooling around NFTs has uh, has been uh, progressing on Hedera. So uh, shout out to everybody who's building infrastructural pieces uh, to, to have better experiences with uh, NFTs, communities, and uh, mints. Um, Go, uh, going uh, back to, to, to the questions, is there anything uh, uh, that uh, any of the, our panelists would like to add about uh, their project history and how they got here, uh, how their project evolved to what it is today? I was just going to mention one thing. It's actually not about our project, but about Creamies and, and Hangry that, that they didn't mention. One thing that, that always strikes me about those two projects is Hangry and then the Creamies team are just exceptional at creating culture as well. Like their, their projects are amazing. Their, their art is great. Their, you know, Creamies utility is, is exciting, but the teams are really good at creating culture and like inside jokes within their project. And like, even, even as someone who's, who's busy with his own project, but pops into theirs and, and has fun sometimes, it's a lot of fun to watch and be a part of. So I'd say that that's something that I view and admire in their projects and what they've been able to accomplish is just that, that ability to, to foster culture within their projects and create that kind of, yeah, yeah atmosphere. It's been a lot of fun to see. Yeah, so I, I also, I wanna, oh, oh, sorry, go ahead. Uh, sorry, sorry, Henry. So I, I, I also want to say something. Um, so I came on to Hedera because I saw Saucer Swap and I was a DeFi guy. But the reason I made a Discord was because I saw Dead Pixels and I just loved their art. Um, and like Dead Pixels and Hangry was actually here way before I even made a Hashpack wallet. So it's like it's really funny and interesting to see like Dead Pixels is still minting and Hangry has yet to mint, right? Because they're like the OGs and like it, it's it's pretty crazy to think about, but yeah, yeah. I, I also wanted to um, to comment on the culture thing because that's something I I, I learned over time um, as far as creating inside jokes and culture. I I I didn't realize how big memes would be in in Discord and things. So I, I learned a lot from Crypto King. He's he's one of the mods in my server. And and Panda, he's he's like a master at creating gifs and um, and stickers. So he he, I feel like Panda's been a little a, a bit of a mentor to me. Um, also with with like going to other servers and creating gifs for other projects because we have a lot of fun him and I doing that. So like um, I'm I'm in Dead Pixels a lot, creating gifs for for ghosts and things, and it's. That that's also a testament to like some of these projects where how 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 easy it is to meme them, you know, um, because it it makes the Discord servers a lot of fun, and and I I do feel like there's a right and wrong way to do it, and um, so it it does take some thought. I mean, it's, it's it sounds silly and stupid because it's a meme, but 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 I feel like it's almost like being a comedian, you know, if to to create a good one. That's uh... right. Sorry, go ahead. Man. I was just going to say it's a real love fest up here right now. <laughs> I, was, uh, <laughs> I was thinking. It's so wholesome. I was in, I, I popped into, I popped into, I won't, I won't say the chain, but I had popped into a, a Twitter space once with, it was like a panel with a bunch of the NFT projects and there was some bad blood. Like I, I couldn't tell exactly what it was going on because I didn't know the history, but 
it just it was uncomfortable. There was a lot of unhappiness. So it's it's uh it's funny to to see the love fest going on here. Um, I like even, even think of sorry. Go ahead, Henry. No, I've I've jumped in on some Solana spaces, and it's like super toxic and and like aggressive when like a founder of a huge project joins. And the host is like tearing them apart. Like even even if it's <laughs> even if it's like deserved, maybe it's like vicious. And the, and, and the founder's like on the verge of tears, but trying to play it off like, oh yeah, this doesn't bother me. But it really does, you know. <laughs> it's it's oh, like boy. so sad. Like every Solana spaces I joined, I can't stay for longer than like two minutes. It's it's either like people just really high and just talking to each other, or just <laughs> just like the toxicity is crazy. <laughs> I hung again. You know, uh, speaking, uh, speaking of which, and we were talking about kind of like communities and culture and gifts, like I, Hangry and Monkey and Panda, in, like in our very early days, they were, I think Monkey created the first ghost gift ever. And then we have like a tenor account where we post all of the, the ghost gifts. And I, I think Hangry is like 50% of them. <laughs> at this point and panda panda makes up like the majority of the rest so i mean it's it's kind of funny to be up here with with these two and like you know they've been such a huge part of our community right. and, and making our community what it's become so it's it's kind of fun to i, to like, I like to with. think i like to think i was the og uh hedera <laughs> gif creator i think I, were... I think i was one of the first ones and you made I, some. You made some fire koala gifts in your right. day. Right. I started with the koalas. I went with like hash bots and then dead pixels. But I mean, it's it's part of. I don't want to say utility, right? That's a meme, right? Oh, this is the utility. No, it, it, we joke like that. But it's it's part of the enjoyment you get out of <laughs> for being in a, a community, right? And it's yeah, it's fun. It's hella fun. That's why people I think, do. I it. think you can call that a utility. That's that's. That's like a good benefit that is hard to get. You can't force it, you know. And definitely that 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 uh, last GIF I made. Are we going with GIF or GIF? I'll go with GIF. <laughs> um, the the GIF with the guy nodding. I always forget his name. Is it Redford? Robert Redford, the guy nodding in in approval. Is that Robert Redford? I don't I don't know. I think that's what I don't Robert know. Said. I don't know who it is, but it I was an amazing GIF you made. But I'm I'm really because I use the I use the 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 GIF a lot the the guy nodding, so it was it was really important to add a ghost in there. Yeah, it was perfect with the beard and <laughs> with the beard and everything. The beard is exactly that guy's beard. <laughs> Did you guys go through a lot of different variations of the beard? Like, was there like a beard that like went down to the ghost's uh, invisible toes, or how, <laughs> how did you decide that that beard? took years off of our lives i, I like I could imagine that it was so hard so i mean so ray ray has been wanting a beard for the ghosts for so long and he, he just will not he would not let raf rest until we had one so i mean this has been months in the making because we we, yeah. we were trying to get one for last drop and it just there, there's something like the the way that the ghost is shaped getting a beard on it was really hard and, and so many of them just looked awful. Um, and so, yeah, I'd, I'd say there was probably 30 iterations of the beard before we landed right, on so, one. So on your next um, ghost radio, you have to reveal some of the, the bloopers. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll definitely do some blooper. And then here's, here's the thing, like there were some that, that were actually really good, but we had to pick one in the end. So I'm uh, sure that, so there, you know, per, people will have preferences of, of one they they would have might have preferred, but you know, the 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 beard was a was a bit of a trek to get to the final design. This one came out good because you got the three quarter angle really good. You know, it just fits. <laughs> yeah, no, Raf, Raf, Raf definitely pulled it off. Congrats on the beard. <laughs> Amazing. Well, uh, it, it's great to it's great to hear about uh, the synergies that the, the projects have, and uh, you know, a lot of the projects have become tribal at some point, and uh, um, especially while we're here, still in the early days of Hedera, and uh, everything now seems like a blue. Um, also, looking at the mint count, this can also uh, easily become. Uh, I mean, it is a status symbol for.
for for the, uh, the holders of the NFT. So um, definitely excited to see how utility progresses and what is built around these NFTs we have uh, earlier uh, in in the early days of Hedera. So I, I, I was curious to to learn from uh, from you guys if uh, there's any other utility points that you have in the site for your projects or um, just something that uh, the industry would be um, uh, is really uh, leaning towards when it comes to NFTs and uh, their utility. I, I do want to put Will on the spot here. They just made an announcement for a utility and he's not speaking on it. Could we speak on that, Will? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, let's, let's do it. It's... Uh... It's a bit of chaos in our Discord. We just uh, we just announced. Um, so we in, during drop two, we had let everyone know that um, we were dropping 500 ghosts at our second drop, and so we let everyone know uh, 100 of these 500 ghosts. There's going to be a surprise that we'll announce at a later date, um, and we, we did this for a few reasons. But but we you know we the <laughs> the one of it was, it was just because it was necessary. We weren't done with a certain design that we wanted to roll out and possibly include in that drop. Um, but the more we explored it, we realized, um, and I guess you could call this utility, but you know, we realized in some ways there was this, this fun idea about having a special you know, component to a drop that you wanted to add, but, but you wanted to say, you know, we kind of want to save these for the people that are actually planning on sticking around and being a part of the project. Um, you know, any project, of course, you go through a drop and there's going to be people who are excited to mint, but they're not necessarily excited to actually be a part of the project and stick around. And, you know, so we said, you know, instead of, instead of allow, you know, them getting their hands on it and right away going and flipping something that might be more valuable, um, you know, how do we reward the people that are actually sticking around? And so we, we decided we were going to create these, these, uh, I'm not, I, I won't, I won't mention the design just because there might be some people who haven't actually seen it yet and, um, might haven't seen the video. So, so go check it out. It's, it's a fun video and there's a bit of a twist at the end, but we had this design in mind and, and, you know, we, we thought, oh, you know, if, if we could give that to the people that are actually, you know, long-term holders in the project and, you know, sticking around because they actually want to be a part of the project. Um, what we can do is, you know, they could mint just the normal ghost or buy the normal ghost on the secondary market and then have a surprise later that they find out that they're going to get, you know, this special part of our collection. Um, and so that's, that's been kind of a fun thing. People have been excited to hear what's going to happen. And, and yeah, just today we, we released a video um, sharing what that is. Um, and I guess maybe to, to go a bit further in terms of utility, um, you know, I mentioned that, that we, we didn't, you know, we, we, we kind of made the ethos of our project, of you know, one of not promising utility and, you know, utility is something that's going to come later as we explore it. Um, but there, there are a few things about our project that since the beginning, you know, we've had that, those certain ideas that have been cooked into the DNA of our project and, um, with the announcement of these these special ghosts that we're going to be uh, releasing to people soon, um, it, it's kind of giving hints and a glimpse into something that we're going to start unveiling more and more of about the project and, and a, you know a certain uh, twist or element that's going to be actually pretty central to to what we're doing and we're pretty excited about it. We think it's going to be unique and fun. Um, but uh, you know these types of things. It's in, until we're actually ready to do it or share it, they're they're not things that we we try to you know promote or make a central theme of our project to try to say, okay, this is the reason you want to buy a dead pixel. We, we really try to keep the messaging on the people who want to buy a dead pixel at this point is because they're they're interested in the art um, and and the dead pixel itself as a you know a collectible. That was a, a big word sandwich, long-winded answer to uh, Monkey <laughs> about about the announcement that we just made. No, that's great, and it's awesome news. Everybody here, go check out uh, the new video. I imagine uh, you dropped it on your Twitter uh, Discord. Where should people go? Yeah, yeah, it's pinned. It's pinned to our. Uh, our <laughs> and by the way, the, the you know 
Panda's been given a couple of shout outs. We, uh, we roped Panda into making that video for us. And <laughs> as, as soon as he said it, he said, as soon as he sent it, uh, we absolutely loved it. I, I think I shouted pretty loud. <laughs> well, that's awesome. And, uh, I guess, so I wanted to hear a bit more about some upcoming, uh, events or past events that you guys have had. Um, Creamies, Master of Cream. I know you don't like going first. So I'll start with, uh, Hangry Heads. Uh, sorry, not Hangry Heads, with Hangry. Did you want to tell us some more about your upcoming, uh, upcoming mint? Yeah, so I announced recently the the drop date for Golden Banana Coin holders. That'll be October 15th, and that will be a 24-hour period for holders to mint on the Turbo Moon Launchpad. And I mentioned before that the tokens are stackable, so it's it will be a multiplier. Um, holders of the Golden Banana Coin will also be in a um, included in a giveaway for a rare hangry barboon. So I drew um, four clown boons and there's only four in the collection and they have unique backgrounds and they look really cool. So I wanted to uh, incentivize a little bit the, the holders and, and, and give them a better opportunity. So there'll be a giveaway for one of, one of those ultra rare clowns. And um, yeah, one, one other thing is, I'm I'm pretty much got it into plan a merch shop. I've I've designed some of the hangry barboons with like traits that can translate into you know real life. So one of my favorite hats that I wear says hangry, like the hangry logo on it, and the the boons wear that. That's one of the traits. Uh, Rudant, he's he's the host of the Alt Kings podcast. He uses one of the hats uh, in his podcast a lot. The the hat with the eyes on the front the, the on my pfp basically um that so i'm starting out with these two hats in the merch shop that's going to be token gated and that should be ready soon as well, well that's, that's very exciting. we when it comes to uh to to merchandise and real world digital items uh that have a counterpart in the nft world or that can unlock some real world utility that's that's uh that's a unique uh, trait so uh, kudos for that and and I'm I'm purposely not um, announcing the public mint date yet. Um, I'm, there's some mystery behind that. I still have to become president, and then I can sort through things. <laughs> no pressure. Let's uh, let's hear from uh, from Creamies and uh, see what other stuff they have. Uh, any upcoming events or exciting things in the project's roadmap? So yeah, we got. Um... I guess <laughs> we got the auction coming up this week, this Saturday. Um, and the auction is for three master creamers. Uh, they'll be in, auctioned individually. One's a saucer swap collab. So it, it looks like uh, the saucer swap character, but it's a master creamer. And that'll be auctioned off in sauce. We have a hash pack master creamer. That's a collaboration with hash pack. And that'll be auctioned off in cream cream tokens and we have a gangster's paradise uh, master creamer which is a project on solana doing a metaverse project i believe they featured dead pixels on their gallery uh, and that'll be auctioned off uh in h bar uh, all three auctions will be live i believe the 24th is the date and we'll have it separately um, other than that we do have our cream lands coming up which is a big collaborative effort with 14 other projects on in this space um and it's it's probably going to be the first land-based project on hedera uh if you're not familiar with like sandbox or decentralized or something like that but without when we first launch it's going to be without the metaverse play it's more so for like social flexing and staking as well so it'll bring the nft staking for our project um we're very excited about it but our whole project, Creamies, revolves around tokenomics, and that's my biggest job in the project. Um, our CTO, of course, he does he does manage the team of four devs, and I I manage the art side as well as like the front end. And the tokenomics is what really uh, is difficult 
because it's it's hard to gauge uh, cell pressure and by pressure. So what, what I like to do is just assume everything is cell pressure. So any emissions we give out is considered cell pressure. Um, so everything we give out is a low supply compared to say our liquidity. Um, even our, our creamies is 1,111. It's a very small supply, but when you factor in the fact that people are trading in five creamies for 111 cre master creamers and there's 82 of them in circulation, there's really only 717 creamies in circulation. And that number is going to go down further as we release more master creamers. So, you know, everything revolves around tokenomics um, and it's our lifeblood. And I feel like that's what we're good at. And our price and, you know, just stability of everything has been, I think, a testament of that. And the people that are in see it, and that's why we're so closely ingrained in DeFi, um, because we feel like that's a critical part of our project. And that was that was the point of our project. Yes, it's an NFT, but our focus was always on the cream tokens, and it just plays so perfectly into each other. Um, kind of got the idea from Saucer Swap, right? They released their NFTs, um, and you got a faucet drip every day depending on how much NFTs you had, how many sets you had, et cetera. And then you got an airdrop at the end, right? That's kind of how we played into it. Um, but instead of an airdrop, you just get a continuous stream of cream tokens. And yeah. So the auctions are coming to Saturday and cream lands, I will just say fourth quarter of this year. Exciting stuff. Uh, we're really excited to see Metaverse uh, projects start to be really rolled out in the header ecosystem and uh, that's 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 going to be a very exciting event for sure. I'm very looking forward to it. Um, so this 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 is a good segue. And by the way, we will try to go uh, on with the spaces for uh, 26 more minutes until uh, half past, um, just to have at least 30 minutes per panelist on average. So wanted to uh, reach out to the panelists uh, with the following question. That is a good segue from what uh, uh, Monkey just mentioned. Um, what, which feature uh, in the Hedera uh, SDK or when it comes to, uh, to, to uh, Hedera as a protocol, do you think uh, favors NFT innovation and is set to disrupt the NFT market as a whole? Yes, sir. Anybody, you can, you can yeah. take it on. So personally, like when we, when we planned our projects, we knew it would be a lot of transactions. For example, let's say we did one transaction per NFT per claim. Um, you can imagine transaction costs and speed came into mind, obviously. Um, yeah, that, that's the most important thing that we saw at the surface level. Um, other than that, uh, we're very early as far as development, right? Everybody knows that we're, we're just getting started. And I mean, Hedera overall. So uh, honestly, yeah, like the smart contracts are coming live and, you know, we have a long way to go, but I feel like we have a good fu foundation and fundamentals on Hedera uh, to be able to build all those things. And it's very attractive to newcomers, right? Because you don't want to hop on any train that's already kind of had its glory days, right? So that's kind of what brought me and, and our CTO and our team to Hedera instead of building on Solana or Ethereum. That's interesting to know. Uh, Angry or uh, or Will, do you guys have? Uh... Um, yeah, I'll say that I, I agree. The the low cost is, is super crucial, and um, new technology within you know Hedera, the multi file NFT, the Hip four twelve protocol has been really cool to see. I incorporated that into the Golden Banana Coin NFT, so we have the primary image which you see on marketplaces like Zeus. Um, and hash guild and then when you open up the nft there's a, a, a dot glb 3d file that i collaborated with hbar to the moon with and you can manipulate that put it in augmented reality uh, i saw someone put it into a spatial gallery so that's really cool um i i gotta give a lot of thanks to hbar to the moon for collaborating with me on that because i think it came out really beautifully um yeah so just just that the the fact that it's so easy to trade on Hedera, it's fast. There's no uh, little to no gas fees, you know. Um, and and then we've got things like multi-file NFTs, which lend for a lot of creativity. I mean, you can 
can basically make a book within an NFT or put music in there. So there's a lot of room for innovation in the future. Definitely agree with uh, agree with you there, Hangry. Uh, Will, do you have any thoughts on uh, on uh, what is what Prime Sidera for DeFi disruption and innovation? I think I think Hangry's last sentence probably speaks to to the way we saw it. I'm 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 the least technical of of the three on our team, um, but I, I think when we were we we actually did explore some other chains, um, and I think for us, I, what what I'd say probably characterize most of our interest in sticking with Hedera. One was, you know, there's there's something exciting about building in a small but growing community that you you think that has a bright future. Um, but that doesn't really speak to the technology. I think for us, we didn't really know exactly what it was that we wanted to build, but but we tend to try to like dream big whenever we start a project. And so you know, we, we wanted to build a project that's going to be around for a long time and we wanted to build a long-term project. And so for us, it was just important that our project was future-proof. And so for us, a big part of that, of course, is building on a network that that has the technology where in the future, you know, we, we have no idea what kind of possibilities are going to come about with NFTs, but, you know, we'd like to be on a network where those possibilities are a lot more exciting because of things where, you know, the technology, for example, can do far more transactions and more efficiently. Um, so I guess for, for us, it really came down to the the security that we felt that Hedera brought in terms of future proof proofing our project. Definitely. We, 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 we agree on that. And, um, to to uh, to the point about uh, tooling and uh, features that are upcoming in the header SDK, is there anything else in particular that you see is useful for NFT projects such as yours that could help uh, when when it comes to tooling and infrastructure that could help uh, take uh, your project to the next level? Any particular, for example, uh, bot functionality that you see as uh, useful to be rolled out um, or or yeah, just uh, moderation, community moderation tools, whatever that is. Which 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 tooling uh, are you guys looking forward to to see come up on Hedera? Yeah, I, I just want to um, reiterate that uh, uh, HBAR space because they're they're coming out with a lot of tools and um, bot functionality, and um, I'm hoping to even gamify some stuff through through HBAR space. So I'm really looking forward to that. Right. I, I, I wanted to actually shout out uh, DJ and uh, PWOO Sam, P Wu Sam. I don't know how to pronounce his name, but they, they do a lot of the Discord bots and it's just been amazing. I know there are other Discord bot creators as well. Um, there's like NF tier who does like the rarities and, you know, things like that. So, and like almost every week, I think you guys said it, almost every week there's something to look forward to on this uh, chain, on this public ledger. So it's really exciting to be here and it never gets boring, right? Yeah. Um, we're on a project level. I guess we're really looking forward to the new hip. I, I forget the number. I know my CTO tells me this all the time, but the one with MetaMask integration, that's the one we're looking uh, forward to, and that's the one we're gearing towards. So I'm looking forward to that, and we're already prepping uh, everything for that. So that's one thing I'm looking forward to. MetaMask definitely will uh, make it easier for a lot more community members to join Hedera and uh, hopefully stay and um, uh, start bringing value to the, to the ecosystem. I think uh, one of the one of the next questions that I wanted to to ask you guys if uh, is uh, about other Hedera NFT projects. Which uh, pro which other project in the Hedera space do you think is uh, really pushing the envelope today, and how? Uh, I, so I, I've I've mentioned it before, but um, I mentioned them earlier when I was speaking. But to me, HGraph Punks and what uh, Patches Renly and the team are doing, I. I I've admired since I kind of came into the space. Um, you know, I, I, one of the reasons that we actually started a project was Patches and Bones held uh, a weekly um, Twitter spaces. And, and so I think the way that 
that Hcraft Punks, Patches, and Renly are forming their project around kind of this ethos of being a project that is testing and helping push forward the ecosystem as a whole and helping other projects to also become a part of that because I think they they recognized early on to have a strong ecosystem, you have to have lots of strong projects that are doing well and, and that all, you know, rising tide lifts all boats. Um, so, I, I mean, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm not I'm not uncovering some unknown project that, that needs more attention, but um, I, I do think it's it's worth kind of mentioning that about HCraft punks. To me, I, I see them as, you know, a pioneer of the space that has really, you know, kept their culture of, you know, pushing the whole space forward. And I, I think that's great. Um, yeah, I, I totally agree. Uh, HCraft punks, um, they, they impressed me with uh, releasing the, the, um, what's it called? The moon shells and, and, you know, farming the eggs and all that. That was a lot of fun to get the, the baby torts. And um, I'm, I'm just a fan of a lot of projects, honestly, you know, uh, creamies up here and dead pixels and panda and pixel land and creeps and there, there's a there's too many to name um uh, the, uh, the cz i'm in i'm into a lot um uh, music nfts i think will be really cool to see um yeah so i don't i don't want to leave anyone out but there's there's a lot of cool projects that are really great to be a part of and and it's the community overlaps a lot in these projects because Hedera is, is, is tight knit, but but it's cool to see little ecosystems develop within each Discord and, and on Twitter. So yeah, just shout out to everyone really. And I also yeah, want to give I... a shout out to uh, to uh, sorry to uh, Pixel Rug Brandon because I'm a big fan of his and and he he hosts a lot of Twitter space. I feel like he's he's a good uh, advocate for the community, and I I just love hearing him speak. So shout out to Brandon, Pixel Rug. And he's he's doing something so unique as well. And he did it so early too. I I, I saw like Pixel Rugs. I, I believe they were like one of the first NFTs around. Am I, yeah. am I right? They were. And they're they're doing like three D AR and like they're really doing some cool stuff. Brandon's awesome. I, um, I, I. Sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, so I, I just wanted to say, like, I was staying quiet because I don't want to shout anybody out because if I leave other people out, I feel like they're going to get offended. But most of the creators in this space and the projects in this space are amazing. Um, I guess when I look at other projects, it's like I see my weaknesses are their strengths, right? Um, typically artists, right? Like Raph at Dead Pixels, Hangry at Hangry, um, like Cap at, at Hot Dogs or Panda, like he's Crypto Panda. He's a big one, right? He's he's like ingrained in the culture. Uh, Warlock, um, Cyber Hedera, like amazing artists in this space, and and it's cre it's mind blowing, really. Like Dazzle Ducks with the three D ducks, and it, it to me like that's to me that's my weakness, I guess, like my art, and that's why our art or my art, um, that's why I look up to them. That's uh, really fascinating to hear, uh, guys. Uh... Thank you. Thanks for all the insight. As, as we're coming uh, down to the last uh, 15 minutes of the spaces, I would like to uh, welcome anybody who has uh, questions for any of our panelists um, up to, to the mic. Um, I know that I learned a lot today, especially how uh, deeply entrenched all the uh, header NFT communities are within each other and how there's a sort of symbiosis type thing. Uh, I do also find it very interesting that everybody believes that Hangry and Creamy and the Monkey are multiple people. So it's great that they have their own Satoshi Nakamoto thing going on. Um, but uh, just to sum it up for our panelists, um, uh, how uh, taking into account everything that we talked about today, how do you guys, uh, how would you um, wrap up things and uh, uh, label a uh, NFT project that would be successful? Uh, in other words, what, what really brings value to uh, an NFT project in your eyes? And uh, how should anybody who wants to release their own NFT project um, uh, look into starting things? I, I'd like to say, uh, number one, the space is illogical. So don't be 
so logical about it. I think that's uh, something a lot of people get stuck on, uh, myself included. So you just got to let go. And, you know, whether your art is great or not, whether your utility is great or not, doesn't determine um, anything because you could have the best product in the world, uh, in the real world, in the IRL world, and it not sell, right? So I really think it's it's a matter of, you know, just getting the community along with you, like Hangry, our president, right, 444, he's got the community with him, uh, backing him 100%. Same thing with Pixels, right? That's why they're so success- successful. Even before their mints, we knew, right? So I think that's, for me, that's the biggest part making sure your community backs your project and, you know, whatever, whatever that means, whatever that takes, I guess. Interesting. Hangry or Will, do you, would you want to uh, have any uh, final thoughts on what really brings value to an NFT or an NFT project? Yeah, I, I guess this sounds like um, some advice to give. And my, my advice would be like, don't rush into anything. I, I, one of my principles when I started was to stand back and, and observe and I was a collector first and I got involved with the community, got to know a lot of people. And so you get to learn from others, you know, gain that experience and then may, and then you can consider jumping in. I mean that you don't have to, but that's what I did. I I was, as I was building my project, I was very much involved in other, in other projects and, and making friends. Um, and then as far as like the, the project itself, I, I think what I was trying to do is create something with mass appeal and that was fun that a lot of people could sort of relate to within the NFT community. So I think bottom line is like having patience. There's there's concepts of like delayed gratification and, and, and planning and and um, and it's you know, this is a business, but it's not all about the money. You, you got to you got to in my eyes, I, I'm trying to put the art first and, and the entire project is a piece of art. It's not just the, the digital file itself. It's, it's sort of like layers and layers of complexity that you're putting together a puzzle that has to fit just right. And, and, and so the whole thing is, is like an art project to me. It, and that includes community building, um, you know, connecting with others and, and all that type of stuff. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you for the advice, Hangry. And to finish it off, Will, uh, that was such good advice from Monkey and Hangry. I'm, I'm uh, hesitant to, to give any advice at this point. Um, <laughs> but I, I mean, I would, I, I, I agree with what both of them said. And, and Monkey kind of mentioned, you know, there's no, there's no one way to build a successful project. There's, there's lots of projects that are successful for various reasons. Um, so, so I guess I would say the best approach for anyone would be to try to build what they're interested in and what they have a lot of fun doing. Um, because, you know, a theme that, that's kind of come up on this, this spaces and, and everyone's kind of echoed it is that, you know, <laughs> I used to roll my eyes before I got into NFTs and started building my own project about, you know, people keep repeating community, community, community. But um, I think if, if you build something you love and you enjoy doing, not only are you just going to, be able to do it better and, and have a lot more energy to do it. But I think, you know, when you're doing something that you enjoy, it, it feels genuine. Um, and that that's what attracts community is when they can feel that, that the energy behind it is genuine. So, um, yeah, I'd just say don't, don't really f- try to find a project and then say, okay, I need to, to emulate that because that was successful. I think there's a lot of different ways to get to a successful project. So, so doing what comes natural to you is probably going to be your best bet. That's very well said, Will. Uh, way to way to uh, cap it off, uh, Monkey. What was there anything you wanted to add? Yeah, um, I, I I just want to say, yeah, Will just hit it on the hit the head, head, yeah, hit the nail on the head. Right, do what you're good at, do what you enjoy doing. Um, that's with anything in life. Um, if you're at a job doing something you don't like, you're, you're you know, you're not going to last long and you're not going to be successful. So, yeah, I, I do want to say good, good answer, Will. Thanks for that, guys. Um, if anybody, we still have a few more minutes. If anybody wants to jump up and um, uh, ask uh, your favorite NFT projects, uh, squeeze them for some uh, alpha. This is uh, your opportunity. Um, I, uh, I wanted to, to uh, end up the uh, spaces by uh, 
announcing the winner of our giveaway campaign that we have run over the last week. Uh, Head Starter is um, not an NFT project. Uh, it's uh, it's a it's a launchpad for uh, for uh, mainly for IDOs, but for Hedera startups in general. And uh, we do have some utility NFTs built around uh, built around some of the features that we have or will be rolling out, especially for the NFT that we're giving out uh, today. It uh, gives. Uh, 50% uh, boosted lottery entries for upcoming IDOs. It uh, will have some boosted lockup rewards for single-sided staking of the HST token. And it is also burnable uh, for uh, uh, 20,000 HST tokens. And with more, more utilities yet to be announced, um, I'm gonna let uh, um, Master Ogwe uh, tell us a bit, a bit more about the campaign and uh, the winner. Yes, beautifully said, Tudor. Well, there's not too much to say. We had a week-long campaign. We asked everybody to tag some friends and also a project they'd like to see launched through Headstarter. So the week is up, and the winner is, drumroll, at the Rona 31 We'll be making a post about this as well, so congratulations, my friend. Please reach out to our account on Twitter to claim your NFT. And he said he would love to see HeliSwap decks launched through Headstarter. So very cool. <clears throat> Thank you to everybody that participated, of course. And better luck, ne <laughs> better luck next time. Yeah, congratulations to the winner. Uh, the uh, maybe maybe I should also mention that I think on Zeus Market the floor on those particular Headstarter NFTs, which is the lowest tier rarity. I think they sell for uh, the floor is at uh, seven thousand seven hundred uh, H bar. So congrats for that. Um, we have a uh, rough up for a question, but I'll, I'll leave it first to, to Will. Yeah, why, I was going to ask if we could kick you, Raph off. Why are you before, leaving it to Will? Before. That's a mistake. That was, you don't leave it to Will when you pull me up. This question is for Will. This question is for Will from Dead Pixels. Hi. The community really wants Hi. to know um, uh, why you didn't choose the best beard in this drop. Thank you. <laughs> Um, that's a good question. So, uh, since the community wants to know the, the best beard was probably what you would describe as a beard that belongs to a biker gang, huge seven foot five man. Um, and, and while it was fun and it was exciting, I would say most people would not resonate with that beard. I, I hope that that's a satisfactory answer. Are, are we going to have a goatee coming up, Ref? <laughs> don't, I'm don't, more of a goatee guy. Don't encourage him. I'm happy to share some of the uh, trial and error work. <laughs> Please do. I, I actually loved the, like, the originals back in the day. Uh, like People still wear them as PFPs. I, I love those. <laughs> I think someone's wearing the, go the goatee with the, the ski mask, actually. Who is that? N... And H bar Hill or something. Thanks for your question, though, Raph. I think I think we can uh, we can let Raph go now. Thank you, Raph. That was uh, <clears throat> some great alpha right there. Well, <laughs> Raph, Raph's gonna chew me out this whole time. <laughs> well, he's, we he's, are uh, coming. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, you go ahead, please. I was gonna say he's been he's been yelling at me in our Discord this whole time. <laughs> That's a nice, uh, special relationship right there. And, uh, yep, as we come to a close here, I just wanted to say how nice it's been to have you all on and to see the relationship between um, all these projects in the Hedera ecosystem. So nice to see how supportive you are of each other. Um, it's always great popping into one of these discords. There's always going to be someone you know um, from somewhere else. So yeah, it's just uh, really nice to see. And thank you again all, um, Master of Cream, Hangry, and Will, for the advice that you gave earlier. Not only NFT advice, but also some life advice in there. Thanks for having us on. This was great. Thank you, thank you. Shout out to Uwe. <laughs> Tudor, did you want to say anything to wrap it up? I'll just wrap it up by thanking the panelists for taking uh, the invitation to... Uh, bless us today with their presence for the first episode of the Hedera Ecosystem Spotlight. Um, it's a new 
initiative that we have and we'll be looking out to having some other interesting projects on Hedera. Uh, tell us a bit more about their uh, their project, their industry insight and uh, uh, value that they're looking to unlock building on Hedera in the uh, episodes to come. These episodes will be uh, are being recorded and will be available on our YouTube channel. And um, we hope that you had enjoyed the spaces today and uh, we look forward to uh, catching up with everybody else again soon. And uh, one more thing to say before I let you guys go. Congratulations to Dead Pixels for the incredibly successful mint you guys had just a few days ago. And I wish the best of luck to Hangry and Creamies for the upcoming events, both the auction and the minting. Yeah, definitely. We all have all our eyes out for the upcoming Mint events and uh, your continued success, guys. Thank you so much. And thank you, everybody. Have a wonderful day ahead. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Take care.